she said basically ship up or shape out and then nothing. So if, if safety really was a priority for her, then why can we rewind or can't we rewind to go back and have her implement and enforce those policies back then? Why didn't she remove him from office? And now we have to put national guardsmen in place? Too little uh, too late. Politics is a blood sport. <laughs> like a motion to get out of the regular um, board meeting and go into our public hearing regarding uh, the possible elimination of a judge's position. Okay. Um, 
Also, the police contract was included in there for the last five years, $160,000. That has nothing to do with the court. The police contract should not be in the court, caught, counted against the court. And you'll see in your handout it says, the principal one, the court should be substantially funded from general governmental revenue sources just as any other entity in the town. So was there a cost analysis done of any of the other sections of the town or just the court? And also in the cost analysis, it shows that allegedly we had $151,467 in the red, so to speak. However, if you take out the police contract, which shouldn't be in there to begin with, we're, we're in the black for $8,533 for the last five years. So that was kind of misleading, getting the police contract in there. But what people have to understand, the court is funded by taxpayer money just like the other entities of the town. And the reason that happens is because we have to remain fair and impartial. If it's implied that because of revenue, um, you're eliminating a job, you're, you're putting out to the public that you want the court to charge higher fines so that they can keep their job. That's not the way it works. That's why the court is, um, is supposed to be independent. And also, if you eliminate the job, the cost of running the court will be the same. The court schedule is set by the need of the cases, and the town really doesn't have a say over our court schedule. So what you would be saving by eliminating the job is roughly $11,000 in salary plus whatever the contribution is to Social Security and so on and so forth. So if you divide that into the taxable parcels in town, which I think there's 2,213, and it's an average, mind you, because some parcels are worth more than others, so we it can average it out. The savings to the taxpayer by eliminating that job will be 20.1 cents per taxable parcel for the year. Um, as I stated, we have to maintain judicial independence. And again, we're still unclear as to the reason why this is happening. Nothing was explained to us. We weren't asked for any input before this was presented to the board. And so I wanted to present this information. I believe you received incomplete information. I wanted to make sure you get the complete story. Judge Flair, did you want to speak on anything? Uh, if you don't mind, thank you, Judge Picado. I'm not here to go one way or the other, but just from experience, I, I really want to put, put my spin on it and tell you what OCA's position has been. First of all, uh, let me say that I'm currently a judge town of Elmo. I was town attorney for eight years in the town, and I was on the town board for eight years, so I get it. I get it. And what Judge Ricardo is saying is that, and, and this is true, the, the purpose of the town courts are not revenue generators. I understand sometimes we think about that. We don't want to lose money. We do have to think that if they have to pay for themselves, at least in part. The, the idea of the town court is for justice. It's an access to justice. And we want access for the, for the town residents. Right now, in other parts of the state, downstate, well, they're going to have a ladder before we do. <laughs> there, uh, there's a push. There's a push for district courts. They want to eliminate town courts. I can tell you that the Association of Towns and the Office of Court Administration is against that because you, you don't want somebody from out of your town hearing matters that are relevant to your your taxpayers. Even in town, judges here are elected by the group because that's what they want. They want to be heard. Some of the difficulties, and I'm. I look at other towns that have done this. First of all, this is a smaller town, like Elmo, and there's a number of conflicts that come up. If a conflict comes up and you have one judge that can't hear that, you have two choices. One, you have to bring in another justice 
that's not your call. That would be the administrative judge, Judge Carter, would have to approve that appointment, and they would have to be an attorney uh, at that point because you can't have an non-attorney judge who hasn't been to judge school. Uh, your other option would be to uh, move into another town. You could transfer that conflict, but then you also transfer the revenue that whatever that case uh, had would generate. So um, I, I was looking at the numbers that Judge Ricardo put in there, and I noticed because we've had the same problem. I looked at pandemic numbers. You were doing the court was generating over ninety thousand dollars a year um, uh, pre-pandemic. Now I, I I don't know how big things seem to be turning around, but I don't know why we wouldn't see that coming back uh, some at some point in time. And the last thing I'd say is that if you recall when when uh, Mr. Gone had gone around and had a number of town boards reduced from five to three, I don't know that any still done that. It was they've all done that and, and, and trying to get back. I think the OP is last, aren't they? OP is five. I, I said them in judge of number. Yep. So uh, again, I, I, I'm not here to really try. I am trying to sway and trying to give you what I think would be best. But town law says it's your decision, and you have to do what's best for the town. And and, and as I think what Judge Ricardo's uh, position is is it's really not a matter of revenue; it's a matter of justice for your residents and access to the courts. So that's all I need to say. And hopefully, it's under five minutes. Yeah, hey, thank you for coming. Everyone else is a great panel. I have a question to you. Are you a part-time judge or a full-time judge? I'm part-time and now I'm part-time. How, how many judges does this have? Two. Two. How many, how many cases, time works? How many cases do you see in a year as a part-time judge? You know what's about me, Ed? You know, I really don't. I, I, I wish I could give you the numbers. I can, when I'm back in the office, I can give you numbers for every town that you're interested in. If that, I don't know if you're voting tonight and you're going to take no, 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 we So I'll be happy to provide any additional information for you. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, I've known your town attorney since when I was slinging pizzas before I went to law school. So, uh, just so I feel he's older than I am. <laughs> This judge knows how to make a good pizza. <laughs> you didn't bring this one? Because the way this left it. Right? Well, I just wanted no to speak up one more thing is it has come up uh, on several occasions where where uh, Judge Stevens and myself had to recuse ourselves from cases, whether it be a relative or a friend or something where we had an uh, emotional investment and so we have recused it to each other. So it does happen more often than you would think. And it doesn't happen when you both had to recuse yourself from the same case? No. Never? No, thank God. No. I can see that in a small town. Oh, yeah, we're a small town. That's why I'll take it again. I can see that. Although we've had a few cases uh, of a criminal nature that had to be transferred out of our court uh, into adjoining towns yes. over the years. Just, can I ask a question on that? When, when we were down to one judge with the death of the, with one of our judges, how did that handle if we had that situation? We ran quite a, we ran for a short time. We ran for a while. I think well, don't forget, more unfortunate ward, God rest his soul, was sick for a while, right? So I don't think he made a lot of courts. He passed in January and the election took place in November. Just you know, there were there were trials and tribulations throughout that process. So that could be something to look at as to what are you going to be faced with if you do decide to go to one? And that would be the honorable man right behind you, I believe. Uh, I had three right. cases during that time that uh, we took over to Eden uh, trying to tell. Well, what was the purpose of transferring Eden? Yeah, I transferred him over there. I thought he was going to He said, what was the purpose? Why did you have to transfer him? Uh, well, uh, <coughs> yeah, yes, there was a conflict. It, it wasn't due to lack of time or availability or no, 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 ability no. to it. It was. You had to personally recuse yourself from the issue. Uh, the judge is never speak 24 7 murder. Right. Can I ask how often the judges are uh, disturbed after hours to arraign folks? Uh, it's changed. Because uh, nobody goes to jail anymore, right? <laughs> it used to be often. Not only our town, but we did call for surrounding towns, too. Sure, yeah, and it would branch judges unavailable and go down. At one time, we were uh, probably seven or eight times a month. And uh, we When's the last time that's happened? Two to three o'clock in the morning. Uh, I had one probably three months ago, but now it's a little different. Uh, it's a different process set up, and I'll, I'll talk about that when I uh, talk about it. It's a little different now. It's not like it used to be. Judge McKay, have you? 
Under the current system, there's a uh, significant risk that justice, justices will feel pressure uh, from municipal officials to facilitate inappropriate plea bargaining when it comes to the fines and the forfeitures, that, uh, or the, especially the fines for the vehicle and traffic uh, violations. Uh, ethically, the judges cannot consider dollars collected in fines as a gauge to the competency of their duties. The only thing that we can consider is that the defendants that have appeared in front of us have been treated fairly and that fair and equitable justice has been served. Uh, we always strive to maintain judicial independence. Uh, and we do that so that the defendants, the majority of whom are our taxpayers and our residents, have confidence in us. And if we go to the principle of judicial uh, independence, the uh, principle of judicial independence focuses on the creation of an environment in which the judiciary, judiciary can perform its judicial function as the third branch of government without being subject to any form of duress, pressure, or influence from any persons or other institutions, in particular, the two other branches of government. So we'll always have that petition and that wall there to safeguard us. As if, the, if our residents look as a court as being friends of the town board, then they would assume that we work for the town board. If the residents, uh, our taxpayers, look at us, uh, the judges as being friends with the uh, police department, then they feel that uh, we work for the police department. And that's totally wrong. Uh, we work for the uh, betterment of the uh, individuals in our court. Uh, I have friends in our town board. I have friends in uh, the police department. Uh, but they cannot, should not, and will not uh, influence uh, the final decisions that we make in our courts. They can't do that. Uh, and uh, it's a uh, uh, good, it's a tightrope that uh, we follow as judges to keep that line there and keep our independence. Uh, in 1847, let's do a little history. In 1847, there were sweeping changes uh, put out by New York State. Uh, they uh, restructured many of the courts. Uh, at that time, they legislated uh, different uh, uh, mandates uh, that would happen. One of them was for the uh, towns. There were many, uh, many changes. Uh, and the towns of over a certain size, uh, which we qualified for, uh, was mandated that part of their charter would include two justices. And there's a reason they did that. Uh, that has been in place uh, ever since that, in 1847. Uh, now, back at that time, the, uh, they handled petty offenses, chattels, civil cases, uh, and crimes. Many of the courts, almost all of them, did not generate enough income from fines and fees to support themselves. Taxes were used, and still are, to fund the mandatory branches of government. All three branches are, uh, are held up by the tax revenues that are collected. That's why we have taxes for our roads, uh, for our infrastructure. Uh, that's why we tax, uh, that's why we get taxed uh, to pay our taxes. Uh, and uh, we pay the administrative uh, branch of the government through taxes. We also pay the legislative part through taxes. And we pay the judicial part through taxes. This is what our taxpayers expect. Uh, they want us to uh, have a court system. They want us to have a good court system. They want to trust us. And they do that by paying taxes. Now, at the time, it was, uh, there wasn't a lot going on in the courts. Uh, but there was one person that messed all of this up, and it happened around 1900, and I told uh, the supervisor about this the other day. Uh, the guy that really messed things up was Henry Ford. Uh, they had horses and buggies uh, prior to that. Then vehicles started coming. Henry Ford did uh, uh, mass production. He used to learn how to do mass production. There were a lot of cars manufactured before that time, and a lot of them were electric, by the way, in 1900. There was a lot of electric cars. <laughs> Uh, and there were, that batteries were huge. Uh, but then, uh, New York State had a sign 
So what are we going to do now? Now we've got to build infrastructure. Uh, we have to have laws for these cars because they're all over the place. And so we started. Uh, I do blame all of this on Henry Ford. He uh, uh, did, uh, did very, very good. Uh, but that's what happened. And uh, now vehicle and traffic is on, on uh, the horizon. And of course, uh, uh, over the years, things have changed. The surcharges uh, uh, started coming into effect, I think, in the late 40s. I think they, the state there started doing surcharges. They kept going up and up and up. Now the state surcharges uh, uh, for a crime are much higher than the fines that we can uh, assess to the people, which is crazy. So all they get their cut out of, the, out of that. Uh, let's see what I'm going to forget here. Yeah, you need to get to the Uh, no, no, I'm not here. Me too. Uh, okay. So, neither branch can uh, generate enough to uh, uh, support themselves. So, right now, we have uh, vehicle and traffic offenses, petty offenses, minor crimes, uh, misdemeanor crimes, I'm sorry, small claims, civil filings, code enforcement, an arraignment of felonies within our area. I've done three murders in the court uh, in our area uh, since I've been on the bench. We also have joint jurisdiction with the family court, uh, which a lot of people don't realize. When family court is closed and there's an incident that happens within our jurisdiction, then it's up to us to handle the family court cases. <laughs> Normally that's on the weekend. And uh, I think Karen's had a few, I know I've got a few family court cases, uh, very few, but that's part of our jurisdiction, is the family court. Uh, what am I going to forget? The judges are on call 24-7. I get calls all hours of the day, and I get calls. I'll get people call me 11, 12 o'clock at night with a question. I don't know why they're not sleeping, and I am. Uh, <laughs> but they had a question. You know, they had sex. They had a question. They couldn't go to sleep. Uh, but these are from our residents. And the residents want judges uh, that are from their town. Uh, we, uh, we know the residents. They know us. We know the backstories. Uh, we know who has problems. Uh, uh, we can communicate very, very easily. Uh, it's very difficult for a judge that's not familiar with the town to come in and uh, do a good job for our residents. Uh, the locally elected justices are required to be here uh, from within our town. And uh, like I said, we know the town. Uh, we're tied to the community. We can always, uh, we can always get another judge out of our area, but uh, I don't think the uh, residents would appreciate that. So to close this, I'll give you my opinion. I think that uh, we're premature to do this at this time. Should we do it? Oh, and I want to say the town board is doing what they're supposed to do. This is their job, their fiscal watchdogs of our town. So they bring this up and they say, uh, hey, the numbers aren't here. Well, I can't talk to you about the numbers. Uh, but that's what they're supposed to do. Uh, and there was somebody going around. We could cut uh, a couple of the councilmen, and that would probably save us more money, but <laughs> volunteers. Or, yeah, yeah, eight volunteers. <laughs> we, we could do that. But uh, the taxpayers deserve uh, what they voted for. Uh, do I think the revenues will get better? Uh, maybe. I don't think they're ever going to go back to where they were prior to uh, COVID. I don't, think I don't think the revenues will ever go back. The cases will still be there. Even our criminal cases now, we have uh, so many different programs that are out there. Uh, drug programs, rehab programs, uh, gambling uh, rehabilitation programs, where <clears throat> when people used to come into court, we would adjudicate uh, and uh, they would pay their fine and they would leave. Well, uh, we have a little different thought process now. We're trying to help the defendants out a little bit more. So there's programs. If they go to the program and they successfully complete the programs, we may not charge them a fine. 
They may not, uh, there may not be the, the, the punitive thing that happened to them is they had to go to a year to a program. And some of our cases hang on for a year because people are in programs. Uh, so uh, the revenues uh, were also cut by that, but I think it's a good thing. The programs are great for people. Uh, so my opinion is, no, we're, uh, we're very, very uh, uh, premature about it. I don't think the revenues will come back to uh, uh, pre-pandemic uh, stages. I think this year they're going to remain flat. I think next year they're going to get better. Uh, how much better, I don't know. I, I don't know. And, and not to be a wise guy, but I don't care. Uh, I, I really don't care. I, uh, about the revenues, what I care about are the people that come in front of us and what happens with that. So, this is what I'll ask the board. If you vote no, that's great. Uh, but I do have a request. If you do vote to go ahead and uh, do this, then my request is this. If you vote to eliminate one of the town justices, I ask that within, within your resolution, you include putting this on the ballot during our next election so that the taxpayers make a final decision. I ask that you word the resolution very carefully so this happens. It's uh, good for the taxpayers and will keep the judges from going door to door getting signatures to force an election. Uh, it's just not a good look for the justices. We don't want to be coming down the door asking people, you know, please uh, save the judge job. Uh, I will ask the board, please make a part of your resolution so it automatically ends up on the ballot. If you vote yes. That's it. Thank you. So, Judge Stevens. Okay. I have one question. Um, I don't believe that the city, why the board is considering this, is a public hearing that should be stated publicly, why the board called the public. I'll, I'll state it. Can I state it? Oh. You see, because, because they're, they're the physical watchdogs and they're looking at the numbers. Our numbers are way down. Our numbers are. They never stated to us what. Oh, okay. It was Justify that. 
the same way as we have to justify where we're getting our savings so we're not just spending money. So for me personally, I probably speak for everybody out there, but I'll let them tell you that, it doesn't have anything to do with revenue at all for me. I don't expect you guys to cover your own weight. I don't want you guys to pull your own weight. You know, like you were referring to district courts where you get settled out and somebody may not be a resident and they're handling business in your town. Justice is blind. Whether you're in a district court or a local court, that justice should still be blind. There shouldn't be a favor or a nepotism or something to that effect because you're going before a judge in your own town. So it's not bad for me. For me, it's where's our budget? What's the caseload predicate for the amount of people? Like he just said, you guys had 3,600 cases. That's two judges, two full time. And I don't know if that's fact, by the way. That's what somebody right. said. Hypothetically. So it's really not about revenue. I don't think anybody up here is looking and saying, hey, you know what? We've got two judges and uh, a part time clerk for each judge, and they're not making their way or they're not pulling the money in it. I don't, I don't want you going out and taking another one of my neighbors because then when I go to save lot, somebody's screaming at me because they got a ticket going 36 and 35. I don't want to do that. You know, and at the same time, I don't want to pay more taxes than I pay. So I think it's from just looking at a fiscal standpoint, what makes sense and can we have a conversation? I am very open-minded. All of you folks brought a lot of really good points to here tonight. And you've educated me in some things that I may not have known about. So I really do appreciate everything you're saying and considering. And I have no preformed opinion about this whatsoever. And as far as I know, nobody else up here does. Part of this, uh, the reason we went revenue, uh, because the sheet that we were given and that you were given uh, just made me cringe because uh, as we listed the things for the Justice Court on there, so it's transferred $7,000 for the police. We can't be associated with that at all. It shouldn't even be on the sheet. And I know it's just for information purposes. Yeah, but uh, that's why we're talking money. That, that was $30,000 a year. It's nothing to do with us. Absolutely nothing to do with us. Yeah. So I, I have a question, though, but you're right, it's not about the revenue, but is, and maybe John can answer this question, maybe it's my question. I think the police are in it because that's where the budget's broken up, the police and courts, right? Well, the police, if, if we didn't have, well, ask, ask the judges, how many tickets do you get for the state troopers and the sheriffs in the court? We don't have it broken down like that. Well, you probably don't get many. Sure. Right. If, I'm, if I'm a betting man, yeah, the budget has, uh, there's the United States. Also, it's not our budget. The reason why we put it on the police. If you didn't have the police department in there, well, you wouldn't have any, anybody coming to court. So part of that, part of the expense of the court would be paying the money for the police department. Correct. Now, I don't believe we need to get rid of the police department. I don't think the military people want to get rid of the police department either because they respond to many other things other than a speeding ticket. I but the very fact that you associate the two is, is, is well, if, 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 if the village didn't write the hits, you wouldn't have anything. Can I? So I would like to make a respectful request that a statement stop being made that the courts are hemorrhaging money. Is that I don't appreciate hearing that. I know Judge Stevens doesn't appreciate hearing that. We are not hemorrhaging money. If I could just respond to that 3600, it would not surprise me if I did read the 3600. Yeah, you got that 400, which is nice. We got, I also, when we, built, when we built our town hall, we have the state troopers and the sheriff's house there. And I said five days a month. I don't know how long you did See how many court sessions do you have a month? We have three. Well, we have 10 a month. I, I said five, and Bob said well, the other the judge said four to five. Uh, okay. yeah, but the difference is you have to work low. Right. You have a workload. We would. I would love to have ten courts a week, a month. Karen, so, what does right, um, your honor? I'm sorry, your honor. Um, what does dictate your caseload or your I'm schedule? Sorry. What dictates your monthly schedule? Well, like, how do you determine Judge Stevens is going to do X night and Judge Ricardo is going to do X and X night? Or because well, I think you have two nights and he has one. Say there's a, a criminal case. Whoever the state police or the sheriffs or the village police, they put they they dictate the court night who goes to what. Well, because yeah, they, 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 they have a judge, we've their own court. Right, because I can go on the website and I see 12 months of court dates. When they get the person their citation, 
They give them a court date. They never have a court schedule. Right, they but that's what I'm asking. What, what dictates how you come up with your court schedule? Because I believe you're two nights a month and Judge Stevens is one. Yes. And that's for the year. You have your nights every month from now until the end of the year, and he does. Yes. So how do you determine how many nights a month court will Well, it depends on, on how busy how busy it is. I mean, we have to have a set schedule because we can't just say, okay, this month we have two criminal cases, so I'm only going to have one court. Right. Or last month we have 10 criminal cases, we're going to have two courts. Yes, we have to have a set schedule. Right, and so is it you decide you're going to run your court two nights a week and then judge, or two nights a month, and then Judge Stevens determines he's going to run his yeah, one night a month? Yeah, he wants to hold both in one night, and that's his call. He, he finds it more efficient to do it that way. You're a criminal man, so uh, you're... No, I'm, I, I get that. No, I'm not asking about the business of the court. I'm just asking what predicates the schedule, how you guys come up with... Well, I think Judge Stevens does both criminal and traffic. Same oh, I, I, we pick our own, we pick our own day. That's what's going to answer my question. So you're doing crook character, I'm sorry, you're on a ricotta. You're doing criminal one night, V and T the other night. I got you. Judge Stevens does both in one night. Yeah. That will be not make sense. Thank you. Still do two, but you like the more efficient. No, totally understand. I'm not questioning that. I just didn't know how that came about, but that answers it right there. Thank you. So you, you got to ask, like, you know, why is volume down? And, and I'm not talking dollars, but you're seeing how many people in the court, why aren't we seeing lots of courts? And in this town, is that when the, the prison is closed, and I'm sure, you got any of the municipal police here? No. No. Go here? No. No. So you get less, less traffic on our roads. So we're not saying, and I know I'm not saying, is that the judges aren't doing their job. They're doing their job. They're giving, they do what's given to them. Unfortunately, not much is given to them. And the last thing, and I'm not going to say that the village police and the state police and the sheriffs aren't doing their job. I'm assuming that they're ticketing and or holding people accountable that are breaking the law. Because that's their job. So I'm not even going to insinuate that they're not doing their job. But, you know, when you look at municipalities, a lot of municipalities, and, you know, and a lot of town supervisors are speaking of this, is that population is down, the prison is closed, you don't have that big, all these people filling up save a lot in our town on the weekends before they go to prison and bring all the goods and stuff that they need. Um, and that's, I hate to say it, but that's, Probably where we got to a lot of the tickets. I have the police report for the month of February, which I am assuming tells us what we can look forward to in March. I, I, I'm not sure how it works, but if they write tickets in February, do you see cases in February? Or do you see them in March? If they write tickets in February, you see them in March. March. So the police report. Which police report? The village police report. The village police report shows 10 traffic tickets for the month of February. With a reduced, with a reduced schedule for the winter months, correct? Versus summer? Yes, in the winter, they only work three days a week because it's summer day. And, and give the benefit, give the benefit. Ironically, I just love living in the town where everybody's just law abiding. There's not one person in our town that breaks the law. Don't you feel good about that? But is that going to come? Here's the list of other people. Well, not again, one is for your college. But again, you're referring to traffic, what you call criminal, and everything else. Well, I got, the, I, just, I, got the entire, I got the police report. Again, can you answer, what I would can like you to answer see, my question, please? I'm sorry, what was, you, you went way left when I said it's a reduced schedule for the winter months versus what they do for the summer. So uh, I don't know what about, you're talking about tickets through the winter months with a very reduced schedule, okay? When spring comes, when kids are walking the streets and the patrol officers are out there, I know firsthand, okay? What, what the village police do and how often they work during the summer versus what we used to schedule them for during the winter. So if you're going to go by a February schedule, then what that does to what you guys are talking about tonight is not a fair assumption. Oh, I'm not saying they're not doing their job. I didn't yeah. say that. Yeah. I, I did not say that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just telling you what I just get the police right here. Before the Using that as an example as to why things are down or why things could be down, the jail being closed, the police are only there 
ticketing cards unless they absolutely had to get out of the car and deal with someone. They weren't going into those bonfire parties and dealing with people because, you know, things have changed. Yes, I think things are going to get bad better, but also there's a huge separation between what the judges do, the amount of paperwork they have to do, the amount of, you know, independence that they have separate from the board that they're, they're getting commingled with police departments and everything else that should not be. And I think muddy, the waters have been muddy on this subject and, and they need to be cheesed out here. You know, we, we can't bring in salaries for police departments into where our judges are and how we run our, our, our court system. You can't, you can't do that because it makes us look like we are ticketing people to make court revenues, and that is illegal. I agree. Anybody else? Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for the input. It was a lot of good stuff and things for the board uh, to think about. I know I learned a lot. I don't know about anybody else, but uh, it's very informative. I appreciate it. Again, it's just, I think as Judge Stephen says, we look at things and uh, we look at what it stays for here. I think we look at highway, we've got other cuts uh, in, the, in the town uh, to try to save money. Uh, we only have a $2 million budget and we try to uh, do the best we can with what we have. So, um, you know, we have looked at other departments and made other cuts. Um, you know, this is as we just keep going through the list, we just look at things. And no decision is made. I think everybody up here, as Mike said, is open-minded. We're just investigating and looking and listening <coughs> as what today was. And that's why you have public here. And I think everybody brought a lot of good things. And I'm very grateful for it. Can I just add one thing to that? Um, and I, I apologize, I'm not going to say what well, made the counter, what the counter was, but I noticed this. I've only been up in this spot since January 1. Never been a politician in my life before this, I swear to God, and I wouldn't even tell you. But the one thing I noticed, and I notice it everywhere I go in this capacity as a councilman, whether working on a building or dealing with a department, a department head, whatever, there is a lot of, I heard this, I heard that, he said this, she said that. And now this is my third time sitting up here, and 99% of you have never seen out in this audience before. And everybody seems to run around town and talks a lot of stuff, but don't come here to ask the question. Like you said, you were flabbergasted, caught off guard, didn't know anything about it. This was discussed last month. If you were here, and I'm not saying let anybody out, but if you were here last month, you wouldn't know. That. Nothing comes by surprise. And I find a lot of people throughout the town, they, everything is by surprise. It was executive session last month. Pardon me? It was done in executive session last year. And then right, and when we came back out of the executive session, it was discussed publicly in this room right here. Am I correct? I understand that. I'm not disputing that. But what I'm saying is, it, it is in the minutes. It should be in the minutes. It was when you guys came out of the executive session, opened up the meeting, Correct. and said that you guys were having a public hearing to discuss this. And, and those minutes are online and available. They were approved tonight. They will be online. Gotcha. So, and I don't think the other thing, and don't get cut off the weeds again here, and I don't think anything happens over one meeting. What I'm saying is, if we could get more community participation every month, and them seats out there, to help us up here, that would be wonderful, as opposed to running around out of jellies in the morning over a breakfast sandwich saying, do you know what everybody's doing now? Because I just, I seem to run into a lot, and it seems there's a lot of negativity, and a lot of miscommunication, and things get misconstrued. So I know my number's on a website, and if anybody wants it, okay, you can call me anytime. If I don't have an answer, I'll try to get it for you. I'll give you the best answer if I can. You may not like it, but it is what it is. But I just wish everybody would come to these forums and participate more, because sometimes, you were right, we get blinded by numbers, because that's what we're supposed to do, right? And we're just coming off the organizational minutes, and then you get in the budget. So you're right. So you guys being out there helping us bring attention to things as you guys see them, that's a huge help. And I welcome you to do that. I, I can tell you, no, 18 years I did that. Okay. Well, why'd you quit? We need to. It's 18 years of long life. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll see it. I already do, but I was on your side, and I would look out in the audience, and I'd see one or two people. Okay. Yeah. But when 
a situation becomes uh, to the forefront that's passionate to people within the community, I think they become involved. Yes. Okay? So I'm 1,000% guilty that everything's running smooth until you hear something. I don't want to come and sit and listen to the same old ramble. And I did it for 18 years. If something's concerning, I'll come and talk. I'll come and ask. You know, I'll pick up the phone. I'll call one of these. I'll see John on the street. I'll, uh, you know, right. They might not like to hear what I got to say. Exactly. You know, that's just the way it works. Right. democracy is what we do. But, yeah, it is better if we got more people involved. But, yes, just remember, sitting up there as a newbie, you, you'll find the people that become passionate about certain things, and that's when you see them. And, and, and I'm okay with what I don't want to be friends to it, whatever, but you question me, I don't mind that. Um, and, and by all means, if you can't make the meeting, somebody says, hey, I heard that old police guy did this, have him call me or come to the next meeting and let's talk about it. Because it should be an open door, open floor, open mic, and everybody's passion should be addressed and concerns, and, you know, I, I would like to really see that. I mean, maybe it's a pipe dream, I don't know, but that's what I would ask for. And that's all I would say, thank you. And, and to expand on Mike, this is why we do the public meeting, um, because we do know we have passionate people. I mean, look out here, normally we see one or two, and whether if we just go on the public and blah, 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 I want everyone to know and have the opportunity to come and speak. This is why we put it in the paper. This is, this is what tonight was about. If anything is important, whether we are obligated to have a public meeting for it, that doesn't, that's not the reason we have it. Whenever we have something we think is important to the town that we have to think about, that, gosh, we go this way, we go that way, but what's important to us is what everybody thinks, that's why we have the public meeting. This is the discourse that we actually invite. And I do want to thank everyone for showing up, because I got from everyone how you feel, how passionate you are. And I have a better idea now of what the judge does, and I think everyone in this room has a better idea of what the judge does. It's not just a number of cases. Things have changed. That one case carries on. And it's, ten, it's not one case, get your mind lead, it's ten times. And pendulums always swing. The right, the left, the, the police, so they can write a lot of tickets. Are the police going to be respected? They're not respected. And I think we're going to see the pendulum swing back some, some as Judge Stevens said. Is it ever going to be where it was? No. You know, and do I want, I drive a bright yellow pickup truck. Do you think I want the police out of home? <laughs> no. You know, and the, the, the jail, that's a good and a bad. We lost some revenue. I mean, not from the court system, but from the community, our gas station. We were going to get a gas station. Crosby was going to come build a new gas station, and then they closed. They said, "No, we're not coming in." You know, so the town is going to wax and it's going to wane, and maybe we just need to be a little more patient and see where this goes. And I again thank everyone for being here tonight. I appreciate your faces. All right. I just had a thought. Yes. About this gas station, okay? When you talked about electric charging, mm -hmm. the gas station put an extension on it for the electric cars. That's certainly any gas station's private. You don't sell gas, why sell electric? Yeah, that's just what I got a feeling that the county and the state is going to ban you just to have something. I mean, that. But it would probably be two towns left without I'll be honest with you, if we end up having to have a solar farm, we have what's called a pilot. It's a payment in lieu of taxes. I want them to pay for it. I want them to build it. I want them to maintain it. And I want them to pay for electricity for it. Because if I have to look at a solar farm in my town, which is, which is going to be forced down our throat, we're really not going to have a choice if they jump through. I don't want to say jump through the hoops. So if, if they do it and they're supposed to do, I want to make them contribute some in this town. That's just something I like to do. We're going to have a lot of meetings on this coming up also. And that's, I'm sure, the concern of everybody, especially on Wands. It's going to be in your back, directly in your backyard. It's my backyard, but they're a little closer to you. Yeah. I think we need to do something that benefits everyone in this town and everyone sees every day. If we have to look at that every day, I want to see a benefit from them every day. That's just my opinion. It could be worse if you have wind turbines and have to listen to them. It, again, it's the same laws that, you know, the state says we have to do certain things, you know, um, 